So I um, just pulled over on the side of the road here. Uh, I saw these agaricus popping off from the side up here. Um, they're pretty rotten. They're agaricus, uh, either section xanthodermate or section hondensis. Um, they stink. Phenolic. Um, this is a toxic section of agaricus. Um, normally they will stay in a highlighter yellow, but not all of them do, and not all of them smell, especially depending on environmental conditions. Um, it, if they've been rained on, then they're much less likely to stain yellow or even stink. These still stink. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can kind of imagine how I could see these. And then I saw um, these little other mushrooms. You can kind of see one at the back there. I just saw the top of it, and I thought, what is this? And I took under le un a uh, look underneath, and there are a whole um, bunch of chanterelles. So this species would be an undescribed chanterelle. You'll get a car coming. Um, I don't know, I think it's, we're calling this Cantharellus brunius or something like this, I think. You can tell it's a chanterelle with these really like forked uh, ridges, like intensely forked. Generally kind of a smooth kind of cap. You're not going to see any warts or anything on that. Um, always the current. Here it's kind of an abrupt stop, a stop to the lamelle. Um, yeah, they're a little bit past it. You know, they're a bit wet. Probably, it's probably the biggest one. So they're not. They wouldn't amount to much if you cooked them up, unless you know you found a lot, which makes sense. They've kind of all just been fruiting off the side, just like this. Um, yeah, just popping up like this. And uh, so often when you peel apart the leaf litter up here, you just find more hiding underneath. Um, yeah, I've never seen this species before, so excited. Doesn't have much of a smell, but also the main thing I can smell is DEET because of the amount of mosquitoes and ticks and march flies that are up here. Um, I'm around 400 meters elevation at the moment. Um, there is a bunch of motaceae here. I can't really figure out that, what they are, but it seems to be... Uh, there's definitely some Lophostomin throughout here, can't really... Yeah, like that's Lophostum in there, probably Lophostum in Confertus. I'm not familiar with the tropical Lophostum in. Um, and then there's some Eucalyptus here too, so it would be Ectomycorrhizal with one of them. Um, where were they? Here. Here comes another car. Ah, oh, yeah, cool find. Also, I thought I should mention that, yeah, they really don't look like much from the top. If you see them, so you know you really got to look underneath to get good positive ID on these. Uh, and yeah, forgot to mention there's a bunch of geastrum earth stars popping up on the hillside here. A little puffy, not too puffy yet. And um, yeah, some more up here. First find of the day. Yesterday was not very good, so. Exciting. Um, and just a few meters away from the chanterelles, I found this um, grisette. Um, Amanita in section virginite. Um, yeah, you can tell this is section virginite. It's quite a distinctive section by the deeply striate margin here. Um, they 
Typically, there's a few exceptions, they typically will lack any warts on the cap. Well, sometimes you might see some little stretches of uh, universal veil left on there, on the top of the cap. Um, generally have a pretty ornate stipe, you can see like these beautiful markings on it. And it will have an egg sac at the base which you can kind of see here. Um, typically they are not annulate, like they do not They do not have a skirt or an annulus. There are, there's a, there's a few that do. Um, I've never seen them, but yeah, they are an exception in this section. I'll try to get it out. Yeah, you have to be gen generally a bit delicate. Oh, yeah, we did okay. Yeah, not much of a sack on this, but you can see the Volvo sack at the base here. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, um, all section virginite are edible, but only would recommend trying to eat them. Yeah, once you know your Amanitas very well, as they're a deadly toxic species in this genus. Um, yeah, it's a beauty. Also, where I found the chanterelles and the Amanita and the Earth Stars, just on the side of the road, there is this um, rooting shank, Udmanciella. This is a tropical one, which I'm really happy to have found. Um, Udmanciella flavo olivaceae. This has kind of got this olive color to it. Uh, whereas many of the Udmanciella typically, like, um, what is it? Gigaspora is the typical one that we have in Australia, the most common species. Uh, it's more of a, I don't know, I'm a bit colorblind, but it's a bit more like a, I'm not even going to say, I think it's brown, but, and then typically this type is very pale. This is really olive colored viscid cap, and these ones are old. You can see I broke the base of this, but you can see why they're called a rooting shank, because they've got like this, this kind of, you can see where the soil line was, and then they have this little taproot kind of thing that goes down. Um, so they're an Udmantiella sect uh, radicate, or some, something like that. Um, they are edible. Um, I think, apparently, you shouldn't have too many of them because they have uh, some chemical... I, I forget. I will put it in the comments or something like this too hot to remember important information um, and typically they kind of have like a kind of a pattern to the stipe like a very slight banding or sometimes it can be a bit twisty this section of Udmantiellas in general but yeah they're cool um, edible most people don't think they're great but I've had them once the typical gigaspora and it was actually delicious um, yeah stuff you find on the side of the road Here's some more of those chanterelles that I saw by the roadside before. Um, there was a few in there. Um, I found them before twice with this tree. Um, it's really hard to tell what it is from the leaves. I'm guessing it's some kind of Melaleuca. Another tree in Metaceae, so Melaleuca, Eucalyptus, Crimbia, Lophostomen, Angophora. I don't know about Sazygium, but a lot of these trees in Rotaceae, they're all ectomycorrhizal, good trees to find. Bleats, Amanitas, Chanterelles, Cortinarius, um, ectomycorrhizal, Genero with. And uh, yeah, I think these are the same, I haven't looked underneath. Yeah, they look the same to me. No, they're different. Different Chanterelles. Quite different. You can see from the top they're not too distinct. I mean, you kind of learn after a while what a chanterelle looks like from the top, but yeah, different species here. Again, with these really forked and ridged lamellae. 
and simple colours. Yeah. Just a few metres down, another reason to always look underneath. So you can see these mushrooms here they look a little bit similar. Um, this one here is oh, come on, a phylloporus, which is a kind of, it's in the Bolete family, Bolitaceae, but it has these kind of lamellae, sometimes they stain, can't really be bothered talking about them now, um, sometimes they don't. Most of the genera in Australia would not be described, so no idea what species this is. Could be described, but I doubt it. Um, they're also ectomycorrhizal, and then you've got a few more of these chanterelles popping up in here. Um, which is actually the same species I found by the roadside, not the, not the species I found just over there. Yeah. So, here we have some really flowery little amanitas in section Rowanakensis. At least that's what I think they are. Oh, how they smell. Not like much, really flowery like you see it in the flat. The texture just kind of goes all over here. You can see like really flowery partial veil. Yeah, they're very cute. You can kind of see a bit of the cap texture here. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And let's see if you can see lamellae as I peel this away. There you go. Yeah, typically this section of amanitas are much bigger than this. Um, they tend to stink, though not always, but generally they're very pungent. And they tend to have extremely bulbous bases, so these aren't really that bulbous. I mean, these may not even be amanitas, but... Um, I think they are. Anyway, uh, this section has a lot of extremely toxic members, so not one you'd want to eat. But cute. Found pretty decent fruiting of clabulina on this slope here. Kind of coral fungi. Mycorrhizal coral fungi. Um, really beautiful. Pretty wacky. I'm gonna say this is something like the black tip coral, you can kind of see the black tips on some of these here. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks a bit different to the one I found, I find down in the more temperate regions. I think it's, it's hard where to say, Clavulina vineovaceo savina, something like that. Some wacky name. Um, yeah, the tropical species could be different, or it could just be environmental conditions, but probably makes more sense that something thousands of kilometers away is a different species, but may not. Yeah. So, these, these little chanterelles are just everywhere. I've been finding them. Um, haven't eaten them before, so don't know how they taste. Um, got a little pile over here. And there's some Amanita, probably in section Valade. Haven't looked at it much yet. There's a little chanterelle back there. They're two different species. And then little pile here, and I've just been picking them along the track. So very common. And yeah, always with this tree, which I'll have to identify. Really looks like a melaleuca, but the bark's kind of weird. Anyway, I'll, f I'll figure it out.
Okay, so I just started this track. Wasn't looking too tro uh, too promising for the first few minutes, but um, yeah. <laughs> I was looking at some little mushroom back there. It looks like a little clytosabi or something. Then I came out and pumping chanterelles. Pumping. Some more back in here and back there and yeah I take a long time to pick these most of them are you know they're not too big these ones are probably getting a bit old let's have a look at that so oh jeez beautiful wow so I saw these before I was up a track up there so you just I don't know these could actually be um craterellus to be honest looking at that yeah, looking at this, seem to be somewhat hollow, so, yeah, I'd be saying these are a craterellus. Pumping. Here, here, all through here, and then... <laughs> Well, yeah, it keeps going. That's a lot of craterellus. And they're, honestly, a pretty decent size, these ones. They're in good condition. I'll pull them up. Just look at that. Wow. It's too many. <laughs> then there's more here. More here, more through here. Keeps going down the slope. I've gone a bit further up the hill and there's a whole other patch. I've just been seeing them, you know, every few minutes. And then there's this patch. Here, same mushroom, but growing directly out of a log. Like, look. Same craterellus, but growing out of wood. How do they do that? <laughs> you know, I couldn't even have picked, you know, 5% of them. Beautiful. I don't even know if they taste that good. Okay, I'm out here at night. Got a bit caught up looking at Craterellus, but just couldn't help but show this beautiful Amanita in section Virginite. One of the grisettes. Um, could be something like Amanita punctata. I'll, try and put, I'll just put it on my head. Again, deeply striate margin on the Pileus. Really beautiful stipe. Actually, the stipe on this is pretty average. I take that back. And then it will have at the base. Oh, cracky. Ooh. Fell over. Have. Now, I just ruined this video. You'll have a little egg sack at the base like this, but you can't really see it to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Um, okay, apologies for the difficulty in filming this and maybe the sound, oh shit, <laughs> sound quality, I'm a bit of a s slope here, um, some kind of coral fungi here, not 100% sure.
sure which. It does look a bit like, I think it's Claveria Fragilis. I think that's the name. Um, huge rooting across this slope here. It's like some over there. <laughs> um, anyway, there's some over there somewhere. <laughs> um, I forget what family these are in. Uh, probably they're edible. I'm not 100% sure. Um, if they're called varia, then should be. I still probably wouldn't eat these. Um, and there's a different species here, which looks to me like Claveria subregosa. I hope I'm getting the name right. Um, you can see it's like quite a different form, different tips here to these. So this is some kind of Clavulinopsis, um, I really don't know, it's a bit weathered and freaky looking. Um, yeah, another weird coral-like genus. Here we've got um, pretty decent including of Lacoperdon uh, popples. I'd be thinking these are Lacoperdon purpurescens, which directly translates to um, purple wolf fights. It's always a good one. Um, they're all pretty ready to puff. I don't know if these are. They're puffing yet. Let's see. Not quite. Let's find a puffer. And there's also some little slime molds here, Assyria, which are not fungal. Um, any puffers? There we go. Never gets old. <sighs> like a pert and purple essence. Um, would be edible when it's fresh and like white in the middle, which none of these are, but I wouldn't even bother. Yeah. yeah. It's hot. Alright, so fairly interesting fungus here. Mushroom, whatever. Um, I've been seeing this a lot today. Um, from a distance you could mistake it for a Pleurotus. Um, the most common Pleurotus or oyster mushroom in the tropics is Pleurotus jarmor or var jarmor and it can be like a pale to pink mushroom. I'm a little colorblind so I can't really tell what this is. Um, but this kind of looks like a Pleurotus. Um, when you pop it off and look underneath you see it's got pores. Um, I don't know if this one's actually been described. I'd be guessing it's some kind of polyporous. So aside from obvious, you know, having pores on the bottom, it's got this little stipe. And it's kind of got these lines across the cap, which you wouldn't really see in oyster mushrooms, which tend to just have a very simple, plain-coloured cap with not much um, ornamentation. Um, no idea about the ed edibility of this. Um, I'd be surprised if it was toxic. There's not many mushrooms in Polyporaceae. Probably just has an unpleasant texture. It's kind of it's hard to do with one hand. You can kind of like oh, tear it apart. Like yeah, it's somewhat fibrous. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so we've got reasonably decent fruiting of pleurotus, um, oyster mushrooms. I'm not too sure what the species is. Um, I lived in Brisbane for nearly two years and the most common species there is pleurotus jarmor. Jamo, which is like the pale version of the pink oyster. Um, these seem a bit different, they have a bit more of a noticeable stipe. Um, as you can see there's a lot of little flies on them, but they're more just like, they probably lay eggs in it, but they're more just like using it for habitat rather than, um, you know, I don't think at this stage, you know, I've cut this one open, you can see it's pretty clean, so I'll check them, but, you know, just give these a wash and it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, you can see it's a pleurotus, the stipe's really decurrent. Kind of just going down the stipe here. And another thing pleurotus really do is they often have little babies just coming off from the stipe attachment. Yeah, you can see just all across. Um, these are a much more delicate little mushroom than like your typical Pleurotus ostriatus, which is like big, thick oyster which likes cold weather. This is, um, it's not cold. It's really hot and sweaty. Um, yeah, they typically like softwoods. Um, I have no idea what this is, but generally in the tropics you're going to find them on ficus and on different palms. I'm um, not really sure what this is. The, most of the palms here are walking stick palms. Uh, not walking stick, um, wadewa palms, which are this really painful climbing palm which goes everywhere. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look like a ficus. Um, yeah, and you can see there's the kind of like Pleurotus lookalike here on another log of the same plant, whatever it is, with this um, porous surface underneath and a little ant. So it probably wouldn't, nothing bad would happen if you cook these up, but I can't imagine them tasting too pleasant. <sighs> cool. Um, also, just forgot to mention that Pleurotus would typically have a pretty fibrous stipe at the base. Like, this is really tough, so you probably want to cut that off. And a good um, identification feature. Alright, um, typical tropical plant. Calamus, wait a while palm. And a lot of dendrochnide moroides, I think. Giant, uh, this isn't the giant stinging tree, but stinging tree. Okay, well we've got a um, Pleurotus lookalike here, in a way. Um, oyster mushroom lookalike, especially kind of somewhat these. Um, this is Omphalotus nidiformis. It is a toxic bioluminescent mushroom. Um, sometimes the bioluminescence is really vague so I mean you can pick one of these and take it home and it may glow if you adjust your eyes and keep it in a really dark room or it may not or you know you could come out and it could be really bright in the at night time. So highly variable. Um, typically it has this dark center to the cap, which you can see is developing in all these. Also very decurrent, but usually has a bit more of a stipe than Pleurotus. Um, this potentially is not Omphalotus nidiformis. The tropical ones look really different to the Omphalotus nidiformis, which occur in temperate regions. Um, the colors vary vastly. Um, the ones in the temperate region, the stipe really has quite a different colour. But you can see here, it kind of descends here. 
um, yeah this kind of like especially the funnel shape as it grows old um, and like they can come in all sorts of colors they're really beautiful mushroom um, yeah also when you look like the lamelle the gills are much more are much more crowded than a pleurotus which is a bit more open and uh, yeah you'll see at the base you don't get like the the babies coming off like you'll have on pleurotus just kind of one central stuff I, I don't know if they can come off in a group uh, but tends to be more just like this um, can be a really beautiful species but really toxic you don't want to eat these you'll be vomiting for you know an unpleasant period of time and you'll you know won't feel like being alive for um, a period of time these little flies really love hanging on these mushrooms so cute um, yeah omphalotus nuniformis group I guess but you know in in the future when there's more um, taxonomic work happening in Australia and mycology um, they could become their own species uh, and tend to grow on much harder wood than Pleurotus does, which typically likes soft wood, at least the tropical Pleurotus anyway. Um, they don't seem very fussy either. Um, I've seen them growing on living trees and dead trees. Uh, this is... A, yeah, this is definitely not alive, it's just a dead stump. Um, yeah, last one.